Hello and welcome to Infinity. I'm Charlie Serafin. For the next half hour, we're going to be exploring scientific research into the nature of healing. It's a return visit for our guest, Larissa Vilinskaya. She is an engineer and physicist who is trained in the Soviet Union. She has been in the United States since 1981, conducting parapsychological research with the Washington Research Institute. We think about healing as something that the body does naturally, in time, when it is healthy, or something that a doctor does with medicine for us. What has your research shown about the nature of healing? Well, I am interested in only one aspect of healing because, uh, as you mentioned, healing is a very large topic. I am not a physician. I am not concerned with drugs uh, or surgery, but I am extremely interested and in, in, been working for more than 15 years uh, in studying natural ways of restoring this balance. One of these, uh, these ways, what we call psychic healing or energy healing, there are people who believe that they can interact with uh, universal energies, uh, which are called prana by Indians or chi by Chinese uh, or mana on South Pacific Islands. Uh, or any other names, Wayana, Native American Indian culture, and some other names. Uh, this is universal. If we go uh, from one culture to another, we encounter this concept of uh, uh, healing energy. And uh, this is uh, the major focus of my interest. Uh, People who believe that they can receive these energies, direct these energies, and use them to help other people to restore their balance, harmony, and health. Let's take your example of the headache, for example. The, the individual has a headache, and we can say that it is caused by something in the environment, and in this case it happens to be that this is the mother of two small children, and the two small children are knocking things off tables and making a ruckus and pounding the spoons on the cupboard walls and just making a terrible din all day long. And she has had to raise her voice in order to keep these small children under control. And in raising her voice and in being upset and trying to keep track of what they're doing and where they're going and prepare meals and do the rest of her normal chores, she has, um, at the end of the day, a migraine headache. Now, this woman doesn't normally have access to a psychic healer who can direct universal energies at her to solve her headache. She does have very, very easy access to the medicine cabinet and some extra strength pain reliever that's going to relieve it. What can we do for her? Well, it's a tough question, uh, and the situation you described is quite realistic. <laughs> I can understand this. But what we can do? First, uh, I believe for everyone it's useful to learn to relax. When you have uh, five minutes uh, when your children are asleep uh, and uh, when you don't need to run around uh, doing housework or whatever, try to make a, a custom, a habit just uh, to close your eyes. Uh, to imagine yourself somewhere where you feel really comfortable and relaxed, like on a seashore, for example, or in a park, in a forest. Uh, and see yourself there, sitting among the trees, looking at the blue skies, uh, and feeling like tension and anxiety is going away. You inhale and say to yourself, I am becoming calm. You are saying why exhaling. Why exhaling? You uh, take an inner look at your body. What muscles are tense and what are relaxed? It's very easy to check. You, you can first feel the difference between the... You tense your arm, then you relax it. Uh, you feel the difference, do you? Mm -hmm. It's quite different. Mm -hmm. 
then you in the same way check all the muscles of your body from your shoulders uh, uh, and down down to your legs to your feet and you are taking all this uh, uh, um, tension uh, from your body when you took all this tension when you are relaxed you then open access to yourself to these cosmic energies uh, you just then imagine uh, that uh, this golden prana comes to you from somewhere or you just look up put your arms up and you feel that this golden prana comes to you and brings you relief let it be at the very beginning your pure imagination but I'm quite sure we all have this uh, natural healing potential. Not only people who believe that they're healers, psychic healers, or energy healers. Uh, we all can get access to these healing energies. The first step is relaxation. The second step, uh, changing our belief system. Not forbidding ourselves to do this. Then... Uh, with the help of very uh, gentle pressure on your acupuncture points uh, on uh, uh, your forehead, uh, you will feel that your headache just disappearing, relieving, disappearing, and it's gone. Great. I feel much better already. We solved the headache. Let's look at some of the specific scientific research that has been done with energy healers or the those people that are focusing universal energies and take a more serious example than a headache because a headache is a kind of a fleeting thing you have it now and then sometimes without even relaxation it goes away and then it may come back again another time let's talk of a serious uh, illness cancer is one that's often discussed have you done specific research with cancer patients or other people with serious diseases and what are the results before talking about uh, work with actually with patients, I want to talk uh, about uh, work with uh, biological systems. Uh, okay. Because when we talk about scientific research of healing, it's easier uh, said than done. Uh, because uh, we all know, uh, by now it's uh, not uh, opposed by medical science uh, that our power of belief is uh, has very powerful healing influence uh, by itself therefore if we tell someone uh, there is a powerful psychic healer who is going to cure you then when person ge uh, gets well we don't know what really healed this person this famous healer or his or her own power of belief. Mm -hmm. Therefore, researchers who work uh, in studying psychic healing decided pri to work primarily with biological systems other w uh, than humans, uh, bacteria cultures, uh, plants, uh, animals. Uh, there have been uh, uh, several dozen good studies, uh, and I participated in some of the studies back in the Soviet Union and then here um, in the United States. Uh, I want to describe one study conducted by uh, Dr. Elizabeth Rocher and Dr. Beverly Rubik here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, one of them uh, uh, is physicist, another is biophysicist. Uh, and they worked with the bacteria culture and uh, asked uh, two famous healers to work at different times, uh, uh, trying uh, to increase uh, the multiplication of this bacteria. And then they had another culture which was uh, um, uh, previously influenced by an antibiotic. Uh, therefore, we have a model of disease, disease of bacteria, okay. and then we want the, uh, to use healing energy to make this bacteria not to die from uh, uh, this antibiotic. And uh, the results of the study uh, were extremely interesting. Uh, uh, 
when the helix worked uh, with uh, uh, the normal intact bacterial culture, uh, it was almost unaffected. And it's once again uh, the confirmation that uh, uh, when an organism, a living organism, is in balance, it's very difficult, it's not so easy to change this balance to one or another direction. But when the healers dealt with uh, uh, quote unquote diseased culture, the culture, the bacterial culture which was influenced previously by antibiotic, they could to a large extent restore the activity of this bacteria. Similar studies were conducted uh, with the uh, enzyme systems. Uh, uh, and there were uh, also very interesting studies with unicellular organisms like algae and other what unicellular organisms. All these studies show that uh, really uh, healers uh, can influence uh, living systems uh, and uh, uh, restore uh, the, the balance of the system. For someone who is not trained in physics, chemistry, or the medical profession, the difficulty with the first experiment that you've described is, I know there are good bacteria and bad bacteria. We normally think of bacteria as something negative. We normally think of antibiotics as something positive. And so what was happening was a positive antibiotic agent is introduced into a negative culture of bacteria, and they were be able to stop something good from happening. That is the 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 uh, antibiotic from taking hold and, and uh, eliminating the bacteria. Well, this question was uh, arised uh, during this uh, research project, it's true. And uh, the healer was asked, what do you think it's more natural for you to do? Uh, because usually bacteria are considered as harmful to, uh, uh, hum to humans, uh, to animals. Uh, what do you want? Uh, to kill these bacteria or to revive them? Uh, what is better for you? Uh, we will uh, uh, conduct the experiment according to your understanding. Uh, because uh, the researchers believed, and I uh, am in complete agreement with them, that the healer's belief system is the most important variable in the study. And both healers told, we don't want uh, to kill any living system, to uh, do harm to any living system, even to bacteria. When we work with people, we are not concentrated on killing bacteria. We are concentrated on restoring the balance of the human mind and body. Then uh, the natural forces will, will deal with bacteria. It's perfectly uh, natural for them to deal with them. Therefore, we also want to work with this bacteria culture in the same way to create balance. And then what happens? It happens. If the energy is in the universe, and it is everywhere, and in order to, what we do is we try to focus that energy on a, a, an illness or a sickness, either individually or with the help of someone who is trained in focusing that energy, is it possible that just by random selection that some people are healed without a conscious effort to do so, or without the help of an intermediary, that they just by luck of the draw, are in harmony with the energy that exists in nature? Well, it can be. The, but the process of healing is a very complex process. Uh, all healers know you work with a person. Uh, the, in uh, this natural interaction, we don't distinguish between this energy healing and the, uh, the power of belief and placebo and everything. Everything works together. But then every healer knows uh, that if the person doesn't change his or her patterns, uh, the way of life, uh, diet, uh, stresses, all kinds of things, then in several months uh, the person will uh, uh, return to the healer with the, the same complaint or with new complaints. Uh, once the balance is restored, then... Uh, 
it's necessary to understand what caused it uh, in the first place and try to eliminate this. Uh, then we will continue to have access to these healing energies because I believe uh, although it's difficult to uh, uh, confirm uh, uh, by scientific research, uh, at least uh, for the time being, uh, that we naturally are open to these healing energies uh, through our centers, which uh, yogis call chakras, uh, energy centers, seven centers uh, in the body, and uh, points and meridians of the acu of, uh, acupuncture. This is natural uh, energy system of the body, which is in constant connection with the environment, with these cosmic energies. Then, when uh, we don't pay attention uh, uh, to our health and subject ourselves to continuous stresses uh, and uh, introduce all kinds of imbalances in our lives, then we have this disharmony, we disrupt this natural energy interaction. Then we need either some exercises or help of psychic healing or some other kind of training to get back into balance. But once we got back, we need to understand how to preserve it. Does the, does the healer necessarily have to be in balance in order to channel that cosmic energy to the healy? Well, it's desirable because uh, if a healer has uh, uh, his or her own very quite serious imbalance, then uh, uh, he will be unable to receive sufficient energy to work with a patient and then he will try to use his or her own energy and uh, thereby, uh, thereby deplete himself. And then his own illness uh, will exacerbate. Uh, therefore, every healer knows that first he or she needs to work uh, to restore his own balance and harmony, and then to work with people. So a good healer loses nothing in the healing process. Uh, uh, good healers believe that they are just channels uh, of this energy, that they receive and they give. Uh, and the more they give, the more they receive. Uh, and that uh, every healing session, when they try to help someone, brings them uh, uh, more health too, uh, because uh, uh, they receive more energy and they feel uh, satisfied that they are able to help. Okay, now this is the, <laughs> the $64,000 question. Do good healers live long lives? And I think uh, no one uh, assessed it, no one studied it. Um, uh, it's difficult to say healers are the human beings as we all are. And uh, I was surprised uh, uh, to meet some healers who are go good healers, but they still smoke, uh, which I don't think is healthy. I uh, met some healers uh, which can concentrate and receive healing energies, but uh, they are not against to have a couple of drinks. <laughs> and uh, because uh, uh, they uh, do not uh, preserve their channel, energy channels as uh, pure, they also have later some diseases, they also suffer. They, oh, also come to the same as we all come, all people. Uh, uh, um, maybe uh, there were studies with the uh, Indian yogis, let's say, uh, who have different way of life. Do they live long lives or not? Uh, maybe. I don't know. We don't know many things. I have a news clipping which I keep on my wall in my office of a Soviet citizen who is reported by TASS to have died at the age of 143. And that's a personal goal of mine, is to live to be 140 years old. But no one has, has really discovered the secret of that, of his energy systems. You would think over 140 years that you'd had to have all of the energy flowing on a pretty regularly, uh, at least once or twice a week, <laughs> to, to sustain you that long. 
maybe every day. Uh, but, uh, well, I read much about this lonely people uh, in the Caucasus, uh, in the Soviet Union. All of them have very simple lives. Uh, all of them uh, uh, work uh, 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 primarily in the open air, uh, uh, do physical uh, work for their whole life. Uh, and uh, have very simple lives. Uh, uh, no one of them had uh, television in their homes, as far as I know. Even maybe no radio. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know whether this answered the question or not, uh, but they definitely are not subjected to all these varieties of stresses which we are subjected in contemporary cities. Um, uh, by the way, I studied Hebrew language, uh, and there is uh, a word uh, like uh, we say when someone has a birthday, we say happy birthday or many happy returns. Uh, in Hebrew, they say Admea Veisrim. Admea Veisrim means uh, we wish him or her to live to 120 years. And it's believed that it was natural age of people, maybe, in biblical times. Uh, therefore, maybe if we learn how to um, preserve our natural balance, maybe this will be maybe not 140, but 120. I uh, think uh, you will uh, quite agree. <laughs> I guess it would be okay. It's a compromise position, but it, it's acceptable. Are there? What's the reaction of main of the mainstream scientific community? We spoke with you on an earlier visit a little bit about that. Has the has the most recent research been better received than some of the initial research in the area of healing? Well, it's much attention. Uh, um, uh, if some time ago it was difficult to discuss the uh, research in psychic healing or energy healing with medical professionals, uh, now uh, there are uh, at least maybe I was fortunate enough, but I encountered several open-minded physicians, psychiatrists, uh, uh, whom want uh, to continue this research, uh, who want to see the ways to bring uh, uh, at least some of these methods and approaches into the, m the mainstream of uh, the medical science. Uh, of course, it's a long way. First, uh, we need to find some test, uh, like a bacteria system, for example, which can uh, uh, distinguish between a successful healer or an unsuccessful healer, a healer who believes that he or she is doing something but not unable to do much. Uh, the bacteria system experiment is very time-consuming and quite, quite cumbersome. Uh, but I believe, and this is uh, the direction I want to work myself, uh, that a simple test can be found. Uh, uh, some believed in Kirlian photography, high-frequency uh, photography of living system, that it can be a test. Uh, it's too many physical variables are involved. It's very difficult to distinguish. Uh, but I still believe when a simple test uh, 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 a simple system which can be affected by these healing energies can be found, then it will be much easier to introduce it uh, into the mainstream of medical science because everyone will be able to see, well, this person is a good healer, um, his influence uh, has been proven, now let him or her work with patients and see the results. Uh, and then some clinical studies can be designed and so on. There were preliminary clinical studies when people were unaware of uh, healing influence. The healing influence can be conducted at a distance, a distance of m many miles, uh, and the results were quite positive. But still, m many, many more studies are necessary. We've learned a lot about some of the toxic materials in our environment and we know about smog and we know about radiation and we know about a number of other things. It seems that one of the first sources of energy that might 
that, that has been artificially created that might affect the human ecosystem is simple electricity. All the high voltage lines that are running around and all the buildings, anyone who's in the city, everyone has electricity in every part of the globe now. Not every community and maybe in those rural mountains in the Soviet Union they are without. Uh, has there been any discussion or experimentation of whether or not artificial, artificially harnessed energy affects the ability to, of a body to heal itself? Well, um, uh, well, there were a number of interesting research uh, which uh, um, I um, got familiar back in Russia. Uh, they take the influence of electromagnetic fields quite seriously. And uh, mm, it's the same thing like uh, um, every poison in a small dosage uh, uh, may be a, a, a medicine, and every medicine in a large dosage uh, can be a poison. In the same way, some frequencies and some magnitudes of electromagnetic fields uh, produce healing influence, uh, and uh, uh, some other frequencies and larger magnitudes uh, were harmful. Uh, therefore, uh, th any biological system is not indifferent to external energy fields. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, as I said, when the system is in balance, uh, external influence should be very strong, uh, quite strong, uh, to um, dis disrupt this balance. Uh, but if the system is imbalanced already, then even a small influence can move it in one or another direction. Therefore, people who are already ill have to be very careful with all kinds of external influences. Uh, but uh, we can't uh, go back to caves <laughs> and uh, refuse to live without electrici with electricity. I don't think it's worthwhile uh, to think about it even. We just need to understand what uh, negative influences and what beneficial influences may be and to use uh, the positives try to avoid the negatives. That's it. Is there a way that we can feel or tell or know how, what the energy flow in our body is? Is there a way to, for someone, and we, we did an exercise earlier with uh, a headache treatment of relaxation. Is there a way that you can know whether or not your energies are flowing well today or whether you need to take more time to relax and I uh, think uh, one thing is just your intuition, uh, because when you start uh, listening to yourself, uh, you very um, soon will feel uh, that now it's okay, now it's enough. Also, people who uh, try uh, to um, understand these healing energies, they learn very quickly, and I worked with people teaching them, uh, in, uh, approaching your hand to someone else's body, you can feel uh, the, like very slight prickling uh, and warmth and like a membrane which you can penetrate, of course, if you want, but it's still something. This is the person's energy field. Uh, it's more difficult to feel your own energy field, because the field of your hand and the field of the body are the same. But when you, you work with someone else, uh, then uh, you can feel the difference between your energy field and someone else more easily. And then, using uh, this uh, uh, new subtle feeling, you can understand which areas are not in balance. Uh, uh, some uh, small practice uh, is required for this, but it's uh, uh, quite easy to learn. Uh, therefore, um, we have these ways uh, of assessing our energy state, uh, but maybe for the beginners it's a little bit difficult.